before moving on to the other prime knots, it might be useful to know what a prime knot even is. One intuitive way to explain what a prime knot is, is to show you one that is not. And that's our job today, where we're going to learn to tie the square knot. Last time we saw the trefoil, or the overhand knot, which was chiral, that is to say, it came with two distinct left and right handed forms. The square, or reef knot, is probably the second most famous knot, after the overhand. Let's tie in. First, we'll tie the overhand, and then we'll tie another overhand knot on top of that one. To get things right, we must be careful to make sure that the chirality of the two knots are opposite, meaning one is left-handed and the other is right-handed. In scouts, they'd say that if tying the overhand knot is a matter of left over right, tying the square knot is left over right over left. Now we'll dress the knot for practical use. Notice how the two ends on each side go out together. This ensures structural stability of the knot under a load. If you were to tie two overhands with the same chirality, what scouts might call a granny knot, you'd end up with something that doesn't look quite as nice, and it's much less stable under load. And maybe you can see why. The forces on each of the strands don't really act coherently. They don't act together. Instead, there's a slight difference that could pull the knot apart. Anyway, back to the square knot. We can now dress the knot for mathematicians and see that two trefoils emerge with different chiralities. Let's tighten them up again, and now we see the difference between a prime knot and a composite knot. A prime knot cannot be separated like this. Composite knots, like the square knot or the granny, can. Next time, we'll see an example of a knot that isn't chiral. It's ambidextrous, if you like, or more precisely, amphichiral. <laughs>